I want to focus on this word interfaith and how this word creates construal spaces between faiths. So another way to put it is how interfaith, this word, creates the illusion of spaces between faiths. And there are no spaces between faiths. No spaces between faiths. So I just wrote a paper about it. And I focused on how the prefix inter is the culprit. It gives the sense that there are spaces between faiths. And I explained this, I even did a chart and explain how the prefix enter creates construal of spaces between face and there are no spaces between face. And I also explain how many academics in inter-religious studies misappropriate the syntactic structure of the English wing. Can't speak. See, I can't speak. <laughs> That's not good. Bragging on people for how they use language and I can't even speak. No, I'm not ragging on anybody. I've been ragged on on how I speak my Arabic. How dare you say Arabic? It's Arabic. Dude, he's up. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, how interfaith and interreligious academics misappropriate the syntactic structure of the English language in order to define their understanding of what they want the word interfaith to mean. And one person who does this, and my man is an intelligent man. I watched some of his videos just maybe an hour ago. Is Ibu Patel. I have some of his books because I need them for the degree I'm getting. And I just noticed how on page 39 in his book, Interfaith Leadership, A Primer, or maybe it's Inner Religious Leadership, A Primer. I don't know what it is, but I know it's on page 39 because I wrote the paper and I focused on how he defines the word interfaith incorrectly by misappropriating the syntactic structure of the English language and misappropriate might be a strong word, too strong of a word. He doesn't do it on purpose. Well, he does it on purpose, but on purpose in order to explain what he wants to be true, which is people of different faiths can have dialogue, can have relationships, can cooperate with each other, can be friends, and so on and so forth. With interfaith work or interreligious work, it's really about doing things for your community or your society, and this can happen. So that was part of my paper, actually. My instructor told me to stop being so negative. He didn't say it like that, but the title, I don't know if I mentioned the title, but the title of my paper is Despite the Word Interfaith, Interfaith Work Works. So initially I had just the first part, not despite, but I was targeting the word interfaith and attacking it and saying, hey, it's creating spaces between faith and there's no spaces and people are doing this because they need a job <laughs> they need a job interfaith participants usually or volunteers actually but anyways if you have this notion that there are spaces between faiths then you can think hey i can build a bridge between this faith and this faith well, there's no space there to build a bridge. 
or if there's a problem you can think um, you can think there's a wall between this faith and that faith well there's no space there therefore there's no wall there I mentioned this in the paper but a good word would be the word interbelief now inter Belief still has the prefix enter, so it creates construal spaces between beliefs, which there's no spaces between beliefs either. But it's a better word because it takes out this categorization of I'm a Muslim and you're a Christian, and between us are spaces, and we can build a bridge between these spaces in order to understand each other. Well, no, man. Just understand each other. You know? There's no space there. So interfaith puts that illusion that there's space, therefore there's a space to put a bridge, or there's a space there, and there's a wall between this faith and that faith. Nope, not true. So inner belief would be better because inner belief allows these titles to be stripped away. So a Muslim and a Christian share similar beliefs. And they do. Not just religious beliefs, but they share worldwide types of beliefs. Or not worldwide. Um, worldview types of beliefs. Um, as simple as, I want peace. Hey, I'm Muslim, I want peace too. And I'm a Christian, I want peace. Hey, over here, I'm a Buddhist, I want peace. Yeah, yeah, we always know you want peace, man. That's what people think about Buddhists. Yeah, there's some ruthless Buddhists too. But anyways, Hear that bird? Birds know their prayer. That's in the Quran. Birds know their prayer. Anyways, um, I forgot what I was talking about. No, I was talking about my paper. So, let me back up and really try to focus. So, there's this word interfaith, and it creates construal spaces between faiths. And there's no spaces between faiths. And it does this because of the prefix enter. That's the culprit. Enter gives this false notion that there are spaces between faith. So when you attach enter to faith, that's what it creates. It gives this sense of spaces between faiths. And that could lead to people thinking there are spaces between people. There are spaces between a Muslim and a Christian. Or there's a wall. Nope, there's no space there to have a wall. And there's no space there to put a bridge. And what I elaborate in the paper, or what I elaborate within the paper, or what I elaborate can't speak. Can't talk about language if you can't speak, man. Um, what I talk about in the second part, I'll say it like that, is how interfaith relationships is what allows interfaith work to work, not interfaith dialogue, not language at all but interfaith relationships. So you can have two people, you can have a Muslim and a Christian who totally, totally, totally disagree and work towards a common good within their community, within their society. They don't need to agree with words to know, hey, let's work on this for our community so we can have a better community and so on and so on and so on. 
but what I focus on in this paper and what I want to focus on in this video is how the word interfaith creates the illusion that there are spaces between faiths and there are no spaces between faiths. And I don't put this in my paper, but in this video I'll say that I believe, and this is something I'm thinking, I don't necessarily believe it. You don't get to believe everything you think. I'm just thinking out loud that a lot of academics in interfaith and interreligious studies and a lot of participants in interfaith and interreligious work have this belief on accident because the word interfaith does it it creates these spaces and these people in this line of work believe it because it gives them a job if there are spaces between faiths then someone feels like man i can build a bridge and then they are called bridge builders or i can knock down this wall it gives them something to do language creates but when you take that away ah, you ain't even going to focus on faith or beliefs you gotta focus on what's best for the community forget about talk let's not talk about why we agree and why we disagree let's do good for our community let's help this guy out let's work the soup kitchen together Don't leave all the other stuff to yourselves anyways I just thought I would share 